this is Jack Yeager, and I am uh, obviously teaching the Finance 311 Principles of Management course. This video is really intended to be uh, sort of a brief highlight of what we're going to cover in the course and uh, certain things I want to make sure that I draw your attention to in the syllabus. Um, hopefully this will be useful to you. So before you watch this video, if you've never had me in a class, um, I created a video on my background and I would appreciate if you would watch that again. It should be pretty brief. Um, I find that that sometimes helps uh, and traditionally I would have spent time in class doing this, um, but it helps uh, you to understand where I'm coming from as an instructor. Um, I hopefully get us on the same page. Second thing that I would like you to do, and I would like you to do this regardless of whether or not you've had me in a class before or not, is watch the video I've put together on my teaching approach for the class. Um, I have made some fairly significant changes to the teaching approach to, a comp to incorporate um, some of the things that I found that have worked very well in the past. And so it's going to be a little bit different. Um, and uh, I want to make sure that everybody understands that. Uh, going in. And again, I would appreciate if you would watch that video before this one um, because that will hopefully make you pay more attention to some of the things that are important in what we're talking about here. Uh, talking about the course itself, um, we've basically got six topics sort of from relevance of finance down to capital budgeting. These are the six general topic areas we're going to cover in the course. And then these last three bullets are really things about how we're going to cover those I want to talk to you about. So, the, the, the six topics. Uh, first is the relevance of finance to business. I think it's always important when you're um, getting introduced to a topic to have a context for why it matters, how does it used, who cares. Uh, and so the, the first segment, which is going to be fairly short, but the first module I call them, uh, will be on um, how finance is used in businesses. The second is on financial statements and ratios. Um, I know that a prerequisite for this class is accounting 205, and so you all have some familiarity with um, what a financial statement is, balance sheet, income statement, cash flow statement, all that sort of stuff. Um, but I know that in 205, a lot of the focus is on um, having transactions and booking them into the statement. And so it's sort of a bottom-up, if you will, um, approach to the financial statements. In finance, we really take more of a top-down approach. We look at the statements and try to infer from the statements what they're telling us about the business. And we use um, sometimes just the information in the statement itself and sometimes ratios between things in the statements to help us understand sort of the condition of the business, how it's making money, where there might be issues, how it might be, things might go in the future, so forth. Um, so that'll be covered. Uh, we'll talk about financial forecasting, sort of the third module here. Now, financial forecasting is something that is not often taught um, in these courses. But I, I have taught it every time that I've taught the course, and I am told by my students that it's one of the more challenging, but at the same time more rewarding sort of activities. I can also tell you it's something that the typical college graduate has not been taught to do. Um, and yet it is something that um, is very, very commonly used and sought after in businesses. And so if you've watched my video about me and about my teaching approach, you know that one of the things that's important to me is that you walk away from your college career having a little something extra that you can talk about um, with an employer or a potential employer, and this would be an example of that. Uh, I also find that it, sorry about that, I also find that it uh, um, provides a lot of insight um, for students into many aspects of both business and finance. Uh, the next topic will be on valuation. Uh, financial theory basically is, is pretty simple once you know the value of things. Uh, the financial theory boils down to you should not pay more for something than it's worth and you should not accept less for something if you're selling it than what it's worth. 
the, the key issue there is what is it worth? And so that's valuation. Uh, and so we'll, we will talk about that. Um, we'll also talk about cost of capital. When you have a business, you often go out and raise money. Either you borrow money or you have stockholders or whatever else, but you raise money to fund some of the investments in the business. And those people that you raise the money from want something in return. Um, that is their return on capital, and so it is your cost of capital in the sense that that's what you need to be giving back to them. And that drives certain financial decisions inside of a company, so we'll talk about that. Uh, the last topic, capital budgeting, that's a finance term for how should we spend our money. Um, we have a certain amount of money, we want to spend it on the things that are going to be the most valuable for the company, how do we figure that out and decide on which things to do and which things not to do. Um, and that sort of wraps up, if you will, uh, the, the real underlying, very basic principles, if you will, for, for how finance works in a business. Now, in the process of going through those six uh, modules or topic areas, uh, we're going to do certain things. First thing is you're going to pick a firm, some publicly available or publicly traded firm that produces financial statements on a regular basis because they have to, all of that sort of stuff. Um, and the reason you're going to pick that firm is um, when we talk about different of these financial concepts as we go through that, you're going to be researching um, those concepts as it relates to the, your particular firm. Uh, I don't have any particular rules on this other than number one, you can't pick Disney because Disney is the firm that I'll be using for my examples. Uh, and number two, you can't have the same firm as somebody else. All right, so it becomes sort of a first come first serve thing. Whoever picks the firm, whoever sends in and says, I want to do this firm and gets that to me first um, by email, um, then they get that firm and you have to find another one. Uh, second thing is our business opportunity project. Um, I am going to ask each of you to combine with others into groups of two or three people, no more than three. Uh, you will develop a business idea. That can be something you're going to do either locally or bigger if you want to. Most people pick something starting out at least that's local. And you're basically going to go through the process all the way through all of these steps of evaluating that business opportunity. And we, the, the class will culminate um, with presentations um, on what you, your analysis tells you about each of your business opportunities and a final paper um, where each of you, after you've seen all of the presentations, will discuss what you think are the best opportunities and why and given some finite amount of money to spend which ones it should be spent on and why. Um, and so as you can see that becomes that that the entire course sort of leads up to that. Um, the individual business opportunity projects are important. And that final decision is a decision that, that real companies make all the time. And they tend to make them um, in cycles. Every six to 12 months, they'll, they'll reevaluate their capital um, budgets and their projects and, and make these decisions. And so uh, you, you will be getting real world experience on how that process goes um, with a real business idea. Uh, and again, uh, I can't say, personally, I can't say enough about the, this project. Um, every class that I've used it in, people think it's the best, one of the best parts of the, of the course. Um, the valuation component is very, high, is very closely tied to this. Um, and and you know, at the end of the day, it seems to be the thing that people really re remember the most about the course. Uh, we will also have five quizzes in the course. Um, they will be over the bullet on finance, what it is, why it's relevant, financial statements, valuation, cost of capital, and capital budgeting. There's no quiz on financial forecasting because you're going to actually do a financial forecast and present it on your business opportunity, and that's going to be your grade for the financial forecasting. In terms of the syllabus, um, kind of the big highlights, 
One, how should you contact me? Uh, if you look in the syllabus, you'll see that you have obviously my office hours, you have my office location, you have my email, you have my office phone. All of those are reasonable ways of contacting me. Um, my office hours for this semester, um, you'll see that in the syllabus again, are uh, 10 to 11.30 in the morning on Monday and Thursday, and 2.30 to 4 in the afternoon on Tuesday and Wednesday. I wanted to give sort of a morning and an afternoon option so that depending on your class schedules, um, it would make it easier for everybody to have some time when they could get to my office if they need to. Um, I am often in my office outside of office hours. There's no guarantee of that. And I am absolutely willing, uh, is provided I am able to, uh, to meet with you outside of office hours, with either in my office or someplace else. Uh, there have been instances where I've driven to somebody's place of business to meet them, um, you know, if there was something pressing. Um, so I, you know, I'm happy to, to, to meet with you anytime and anywhere that we possibly can not just during office hours and not just in my office. Um, as it relates to the uh, email, uh, my goal is to always to respond to emails as quickly as I can. Um, for a lot of reasons, um, I don't check my emails more than two or three times a day. And so that means that uh, if you have something that's very, very urgent, I may not see it for several hours. Um, I will try and respond within 24 hours one way or the other. Um, 24 school hours. I, I don't you generally respond to emails over the weekend. Um, if you call me on my office phone, you will find that um, I check voicemails while I'm in the office, but I don't check voicemails outside of the office. Uh, and so um, if you're fine just leaving a voicemail and I'll get to it the next school day that I'm in the office, um, that's fine. Uh, if not, um, I will give you my cell phone numbers in number, sorry, in class. And um, if you need to get hold of me urgently, um, you can either text me or call me using my cell phone number. I consider that an acceptable thing. And um, that's generally what happens for most people. If they're quite honestly, if if it's not urgent, they'll send me an email. If it's urgent, they'll text me or they'll call and leave me a voicemail. And I'm fine with that. That's that's the way the business world works and that's what I'm most comfortable with. Um, talking about class participation and preparation for class, if you watch the video on my teaching approach, you know that um, class preparation is essential to my approach, uh, more so than any time in the past um, that, that I've taught. And so uh, this semester, for the first time, um, I am instituting sort of a formal process for um, grading and assessing preparation and participation. It's what we call a demerit system. And so a demerit is a, is a point system, if you will, but the more points you get, that's bad as opposed to good. So you start out with zero demerits as it relates to class participation and preparation. And um, you earn demerits by either not showing up to class and not making prior arrangements with me that, that are acceptable for showing up to class, or by showing up to class but not being prepared to participate. So um, the points are basically if you do not come to class, you miss a class and you did not make prior arrangements with me for missing the class and you know that I said oh that's okay that's fine um, or it's some sort of a, a uh, an excuse that is uh, typically excused by the, the uh, university then you'll earn a demerit so one demerit for missing a class if you show up to class but you are not prepared when I call on you um, to carry out your part of a discussion or a role in the class, um, then you'll earn a half a demerit for each time that you're not prepared. And so we'll start summing those up. Um, as that relates to your grade, 
your class participation grade, your, your class participation counts 20 points out of 100 points for this um, class. Um, I will give you as a grace three demerits. And so uh, there are no consequences to you for the first three demerits you earn. That can be, oh, because I missed a class and then wasn't prepared four times out of the 32 class meetings or whatever it is, 30 class meetings. Um, or you know, whatever combination that is. But basically for the first of those, uh, first three demerits, no consequences. Um, after that, each demerit costs you five points on your class participation grade. Uh, I know that sounds like a lot, um, but uh, I have to reinforce the fact that I'm very serious about this preparation and participation. So at the end of the day, um, if you have five demerits, you have basically cost yourself a letter grade. If you have seven demerits, you've cost yourself all of your class participation points. Simple as that. Um, the key to this for you to be successful is that if you're going to miss class, you need to let me know that you're going to miss class before you miss class. And you need to let me know in a timely way, not five minutes before class, oh, I'm not going to make it. All right, and it needs to be a satisfactory reason. Obviously, if the reason is I'm a an athlete and and we have a game away or whatever that is, that's fine. If the reason is um, I'm deathly sick and and can't make it, that's fine. Um, but I need to have a reason. I need to have it in advance. Okay, there very rarely are situations where. Um, you did you you miss class and you didn't know you're gonna miss class until after class started so generally speaking you will not get any sort of forgiveness for that but if it's something that you've talked to me beforehand and it's okay then that doesn't count as a demerit it's only the times that you don't make prior arrangements that count um, same thing with participation and preparation um, you know if you if you come to class and you're not prepared and when I call on you and you're not prepared you make some long excuse about the fact that I couldn't find something or I didn't know what you meant by something or whatever else that's not an excuse because you you didn't contact me you didn't give me some opportunity to help you through it okay um, and so generally if you're in class and you're not prepared there are no excuses for that all right uh, the, the, now I'm human and I may make mistakes about how I post something or whatever else and if I find that to be true then clearly um, I will make adjustments for that but the onus on you is on you as students to be prepared it's as simple as that that's your job uh, in my classes is to come to class prepared let's talk about grading um, grading is a fairly simple system I've already talked about the fact that we have five quizzes we have a project and we have this class participation. The quizzes count 50% of your grade. There's five of them, so each of them is worth 10 points. The project counts 30 points. Um, there are three components to that. There is the, the um, financial forecast and presentation of that. That's going to be 10 points. There is your capital budgeting analysis, where you basically go through and evaluate your specific project and your presentation of that. That's going to be 10 points. Um, at the end of the semester, after everybody's presented all of their um, business opportunities, I'm asking you to each individually um, write up what your recommendations are, given a budget that I will give you at the end of class, about which, which projects should be pursued and why. Um, and that is um, that paper, which is due uh, at the end of the semester, uh, counts as 10% 10 of your grade. And so 50 points on quiz, 30 points on um, business opportunity project, that's 80 points. Class participation and preparation that we just talked about, that's the other 20 points, adds up to 100 points. Um, and so obviously, as it says in the syllabus, if you get anywhere between um, you know, 90 and 100 points, you get an A. You get 80 to 89 points a B, 70 to 79 a C. 60 to 69 a D, anything under 60 is an F. Um, I take a fairly straightforward um, view on this. If for some reason 
in the process of, of the grading, um, you get partial points. Um, I don't do any rounding of any of that until we get to the end of the semester. Then I sum it all up and I round to the closest integer. And so if you wound up with 89.4 points, you wound up with an 89. If you wound up with 89.5 points, you wound up with a 90. Pretty simple um, standard rounding. And so an 89 is a B, a 90 is an A. Uh, the last thing, uh, I know that um, there are two learning management systems on campus, Moodle and Blackboard. For this course, we will be posting things to Blackboard. Um, you should have already been able to access it. I mean, you, you, you obviously were able to or you wouldn't even know about this video. Um, you, when you get on Blackboard, you will see that it is set up as basically six things, right? Um, one of those is the um, course management, and so that's the syllabus, all of this stuff that I'm that I'm that you found here. Um, and then there will be six modules. The six modules correspond to the six topics that I talked about earlier. And all of the things you need to do for each of those um, are listed with that module. Within each module, as we're working on that, um, there will be a document um, that will lay out what the preparations are that you are supposed to make for upcoming classes. And so uh, hopefully that, that will be your roadmap and uh, uh, get you in a situation to be best prepared. Um, anyway, I hope that, that all of that's clear. Again, um, sort of as the, the last reminder, uh, what I've covered so far is an overview of the course. It's an overview of the syllabus. You do need to download the full syllabus and read it. Um, you need to check Blackboard um, for the information on what you would need to do to prepare for the next class. And you need to contact me via email if you have questions uh, about how to prepare. Um, you need to think about one or two classmates that you'd like to partner with for a business opportunity project. Um, I'm going to ask you guys to, to form those groups in the next class so that, so that we're all settled on that. Um, and lastly, I need you to identify a public firm that you uh, want to use for your responses to the uh, quizzes. Uh, and again, that's on a first serve, first but uh, first come, first serve basis. So that pretty much covers everything high level for the course. Hopefully, that's useful for you. Again, if there's anything that you're not sure about as you went through and listened to this video, just jot it jot it down as a question. And one of the first things that we will do is address those questions in class. Thank you, guys. I look forward to seeing you.